Good morning and happy Wednesday. Today we're going to be talking about some things that I do every morning that help me to really start my day well. And I hope that this inspires you and gives you some just ideas of things that you could do as well to start your morning off well and set your day up for success. If you can see a little peek outside, you can see that we still have snow here. It snowed almost all night long and um, school is canceled again today and it is still snowing, which is kind of cool. So good morning. I'm so glad to be here. I am running late. Um, I just needed to spend a little extra time with my husband this morning. We kind of took a slow morning. We let the kids sleep in and we just snuggled and hung out and talked and it was so nice. Um, what's a quote from Veggie Tales? Did I say a quote from Veggie Tales? Um, because I'm not just like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I'm not very good with Veggie Tale quotes either. So it might have been an accident. I don't know. Uh, the book title. Oh, yes, yes, yes. This is from Veggie Tales. Okay, so I'm going to. Uh, I was going to show you guys because I'm super excited because this came in the mail yesterday. I got. Um, this is our gratitude journal for kids, and we are super stoked about this. I will show you the inside. Um, so it has these fun little bubbles. There's a little bubble or square for every single day of the year for kids to fill out. Um, and they can either draw a picture of something that they're grateful for or actually write if they are old enough to write. So um, we're really, really excited about that. And um, we will be launching those sometime in the next few weeks. I'm not completely sure. Um, but anyway, we wanted to have them in time for Easter so that people could um, purchase them for Easter if you wanted to, um, if you buy something for your kids for Easter baskets or for grandparents to buy for kids for Easter. Um, so anyway, um, that's that. I also wanted to mention that I am reading this book, um, Finding Spiritual White Space. This book is impacting me at such a deep level. And it is not at all what I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be a book about kind of just rest and finding rest, but it's really about how until you deal with some of those inner um, struggles and some processing things from your past, um, you are not able to really rest. And this morning, I was so challenged by um, just, it was, I'm in chapter eight and I'm just really slowly savoring it. But I was so challenged by how the last few years of my life, I've been chasing and I've been hustling and I've been pushing and, and pursuing and it was all good stuff. But I really feel like it was to fill up this worth and value in my heart that Christ already finished on the cross for me and that I don't need to chase. I don't need to hustle. It is finished. And so I'm just, I'm really being challenged by that. So I just wanted to mention that for um, those of you who are maybe looking for a good book to read. Maybe you have some things in your past that you need to process. Maybe you don't know that you have things in your past that you need to process. It is by Bonnie Gray. And um, so if you just really feel like your heart is kind of frantic and you're, you just don't have that rest deep in your soul, I think it would be a really good book. It is finished. The greatest words ever spoken. So true. And that leads me into what I was going to also share. I'm so excited because the Lent study starts today. The Lent study with She Reads Truth. And um, this is is so good. Oh my goodness, you guys. So I had to just sit and talk with my husband this morning because I was so excited about just what, I just feel like what God's doing in my heart and what I'm learning from it. And this morning was so good about how Adam and Eve, they were they were in shame and because of their sin. And so they sewed fig leaves together to try to cover up that shame, but it wasn't enough. And so then it talks about how Christ, God clothed them. And I just love this. I'll, I'll read this to you. Sorry, I didn't mean to go on a, have it be a devotional, but I just had so much to share. He clothed them. It says, the Lord God made clothing out of skins for Adam and his wife, and he clothed them. And I wrote, what a beautiful picture of how he takes our filthy rags and our feeble fig-leaved attempts at covering up our sin and shame, and he clothes and covers us with his righteousness. 
Adam and Eve saw their shame and he covered their shame with his salvation. So, um, I just, I've just been resting in that today and the beauty of it is finished and I wanted to share that with you. Okay, so let's dive into our um, more practical stuff because I'm not a Bible teacher and um, I don't want to pretend to be one, um, but I just had to share that with you. But I, my um, gift that God has given me is giving practical encouragement. So I want to share 15 things that I do almost every single morning or that I try to do every single morning that really help me set my day up for success. Um, and so we're going to go through these. If you don't feel like you need to write everything down, I actually um, put a link to all of these on my scope page. So I actually got it done early today. Um, so if you go to moneysavingmom.com forward slash scope, um, there is a link to this. Okay, so number one, make your bed. There have been many studies that have been done that say that the best thing that you can do every single morning is to make your bed. And if you start your day by making your bed, it changes the trajectory of your day. I'm not making that up. You can go Google it and there are like research studies done to show the difference that it makes. For me, I have found that when I make my bed, something is signaled in my brain that says, the day is started and it's gonna be a good day and you are gonna be productive. And then every single time when I walk past my room and I see that made bed, it's just like my heart just does this little flutter. like. I'm, I'm in a good place. I don't know. It's a silly thing. It's kind of like me talking about having my kitchen clean. Something about the bed being made makes me feel like I've just started my day well. And full disclosure, my bed is not made right now. But I had a child that was having asthma in the night. Poor Silas. He had a lot of asthma last night. And so he, um, we put him in our bed this morning, gave him a breathing treatment and just cozied him up in our bed. Um, but as soon as I get done here, I'm promising y'all that I'm going to make my bed. So yeah, start your day with a little win and that little win can lead to another little win and another little win. Okay, so one, make your bet. Number two, pray and read God's word. For me, starting my day with time in God's word, I have got to fill my soul up if I wanna be able to give out to others, not only give out to people on scope and through my blog, but the people who live in my house. They need more than my leftovers. They need more than me just running on fumes. They need me to be filled up so I can pour out. So spending time praying and reading God's word. And I love the She Reads Truth studies. I also know that Mackenzie from Bold Turquoise is starting a John study today that's free. If you go to boldturquoise.com, you can um, sign up for our email list and you can get the free John study. She kept it really simple this time and it's just for the Lent season. And so that's another option for you. And she does scopes. Um, she's going to be doing scopes Monday, Wednesday, Friday um, on the John study study as well. So if you'd love to have that accountability, that is really great. And number three, count your blessings. Starting my day from an attitude of gratitude, of remembering all the wonderful things that God is doing and has done in my life. Um, and I love to use my um, gratitude journal and um, just these, the gratitude journals, it literally just has a line a day or and I can just fill that out and every single morning. That's just part of my morning to be able to just say, what are the good things that I can focus on from the last day? There's always something to be thankful for. That is so true. Number four, breathe and spend a few moments in quiet. Our souls need quiet. So breathe and spend a few moments in quiet. Every single day, just take a little bit of time to be still. And here's what I'm learning. Y'all know that this is my year of rest. And this is what I am learning from this year of rest. I'm learning that when I take the time to be still, it's allowing me to be able to process through things and come to a better place of healing and wholeness than I was able to when I was just spending a lot of time rushing and bustling and hustling. And so taking that time to be still, allowing myself the permission to have quiet. I know it kind of scares extroverts, but taking that just, you know, even two or three minutes of just quiet to be able to think, to be able to still your heart, to be able to start your day well. I think somebody said, does the shower count for quiet? I Is that what your question was? And uh, 
yes, the shower can totally count. I just think especially we as women, when we're busy and when, you know, when the day starts, there's so much that is going on. And we need to be able to have a few moments in the day where we think in complete thoughts. Number five, read a chapter from a good book. And maybe you say, well, I can't read a full chapter. Could you read two paragraphs? Filling your mind up with good things. So I told you, um, I talked about this Finding Spiritual White Space book. And each of these chapters are maybe like five to six pages. And so every morning, just kind of taking time, just read through that. And really starting my day off, filling myself up, not only with God's word and prayer, but also with um, some other really encouraging and inspirational thoughts. And if you read just a page or two a day of a book, you're going to be able to get through a few books in a year at least. And so for those of you who say, I never have time to read, making it part of your morning routine might be a way that you actually get time to read. Number six, exercise. And even if it's just five or 10 minutes, um, taking time to get your heart pumping so that you can just, it's really good for not only for um, your whole outlook on life. I find that when I take a little bit of time and do a little bit of cardio, I feel better. I feel more energetic and it's good for your body and for your heart and you're going to feel better. I've also been, um, my husband has actually been um, helping me with doing some um, weightlifting because um, that's something that I kind of fell off the bandwagon with the last few years. And so um, we've been having fun with that. And I had him just put together a 10 to 15 minute um, little workout program. And he comes out and he spots me in the garage because he's having me like lift pretty heavy weights and I better have somebody there. I'm going to be hurt myself. Um, but that's been really, it's been a kind of a fun thing doing that early in the morning before our kids get up. And it's just 10 or 15 minutes, but it's a fun way to start the day. Oh, please, Jesse. Jesse, we're going to block him off of scope because he has been saying a lot of snarky stuff. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but he comes on and he says snarky stuff. And we might need to block him if he can't just like zip it. So I'm totally joking. Um, okay, seven, um, shower and get dressed for the day you want to have. Get dressed for the day you want to have. So what kind of day do you want to have? You know, honestly, this morning I wanted to put on my hoodie and my yoga pants and just wear that because it's a snow day, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and dress up because I know that I will have a better day when I dress up. Now, I'm not saying that there's not a time and place for the yoga pants and the hoodies, and I do that sometimes, but um, if I have a lot going on that day and a lot that I need to do, if I kind of put myself in, in, I wear the yoga pants and the hoodies, then I will just be like... I can just kind of have a lazy day and then I don't get stuff done. So dress for the day that you want to have. Make a plan. And um, yesterday I talked about the importance of kind of making that plan before you go to bed. But if you haven't made the plan when before you went to bed, then make sure that you start your day with a plan. Write down at least three to five things you plan to accomplish today so that you're not just kind of wandering around putting out fires and at the end of the day, you look back and you're like, what did I accomplish? If you don't have a plan, you're probably not going to get as much done. Number nine, turn on some music. I have fallen in love with Amazon music. I don't know. I've been living under a rock or something, and I didn't realize that Prime music was free for um, people who had a Prime membership. And I adore it and I've been I just found it last week and I've been listening to that almost every morning and I, there's some I turn on some different stations kind of depending upon what mood I'm in but I've been loving that just a great way to just um just really in you know uplift yourself starting the day number 10 hydrate usually when you start your day unless you've gotten up and drunk five cups of water in the middle of the night which you probably hopefully haven't, um, you're going to be dehydrated. And so just drinking a glass of water to start your day is a great way to help you feel better and have more energy. Uh, number 11, eat a healthy breakfast. I used to skip breakfast all the time and I would actually 
just go for a lot of times I would go for half the day without eating and it wasn't healthy. And then I would be kind of shaky and woozy and I wouldn't be able to be productive. And by the time that I would actually get to eat, I would actually, you know, stop and eat. Then I would be so hungry that I'm putting stuff in my body that's not good for me. And so being intentional about eating a healthy breakfast every single morning is a great way to start your day. 12, smile. Smile at someone. A smile is a free gift that you can give to anyone in the world. And it's a gift that you give yourself as well. Because when you smile at someone, it's not only are they going to probably smile back at you, um, but also you're, it's going to help you just feel better and it's going to uplift your spirit. Number 13, do something for someone else. What is some little thing that you can do for someone else? One thing that I like to do is just think of one or two people that I can text every morning and just text something encouraging. So um, this morning, I actually, I wrote it down on my list. There are three people in my life who um, are kind of going through a hard time and I just like, I wrote it down on my list to just send them a short little text to let them know that I was praying for them and thinking of them. It's amazing what a difference that can make in someone's life just to invest that little bit of time. Number 14, sing, even if you're not a good singer. I don't know what it is, but when I sing, I cannot be grumpy and it, it helps me feel so much better. And number 15, tackle the hardest thing first. And look who's up, look who got up. Are you feeling any better? Good. You're feeling better? Mm -hmm. You sound like you're still wheezing. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit, yeah. But you have a cheerful smile on your face. Did you want to say good morning? Good morning. Did you have anything you wanted to tell them? No. No? Nothing? You just want no. to say good morning? <laughs> I have t-ball practice soon. <laughs> you have t-ball practice soon. That's right. But right now you're doing swimming. Yeah. Yep. You had swimming last night? Yeah. And it went well? Good job. Okay. Oh, somebody said go Mets. <laughs> Do you like the Mets? <laughs> All right, are you going to go eat some breakfast? Okay, I'll be down in just a minute. She said, somebody said they need to get you a Red Sox jersey. <laughs> Boo! Wasn't that Mr. Eric wore a Red Sox jersey? Yeah, Mr. Eric in um, his church class um, wore a Red Sox jersey, and so Silas wore his Royals jersey, and um, they, they were... Um, smack talking all of Sunday. Uh, okay, what time do you and Jesse start that morning routine? I try to get up at 5 a.m. However, um, I am still working on going to bed um, by 10 p.m. and that's something that I'm still working on. So um, I really have been struggling to get in bed by 10 p.m. just because the winding down and there's been a lot of different things going on recently that are kind of out of my control that have also been contributing to that. But some of it is also just me having the self-discipline to say 8 p.m. I need to start winding down. I, that's what I'm discovering. If I start winding down at 9 p.m., it's not enough time for me to be in bed. But I, I'm learning it takes me about two hours to get all wound down to be able to go to sleep. But anyway, so I've been getting up about 5.30 to 5.45, um, full disclosure, this, this month. And our kids usually get up around 7 to 7.15. So um, Jesse is in charge of, he gets the kids up, he has their list and they do their chores and he makes breakfast and gets everything ready. And then when I'm done scoping, I go straight down and we have breakfast and Bible time. So, um, so number 15, tackle the hardest thing first. And it's amazing what a difference this makes when you tackle the hardest thing first. When you say, you know what, I don't want to do my laundry today, or I don't want to do that project, or I don't want to clean that thing, or I don't want to make that phone call. And you just say, okay, as soon as, as, soon as I can in the morning, I'm going to get it done. A lot of times, it's a lot easier than we make these things out to be. We'll just dread something, and we'll spend all this energy dreading something, and if we just go and do it, it's not that hard, so eat that frog. Do the hardest thing first. And then once you get that done, you're like, you know, I can just relax the rest of the day because I got it done. Instead of spending hours kind of just thinking, I don't wanna do that, I can't do that. Oh, oh, that's so hard, just do it, just do it. And I know it's my personality to just be like, just do it, but that's 
but it really does, it really does work. Um, if you missed any of them, go to moneysavingmom.com forward slash scope and there's the whole list on there. Okay, so I have a couple of two more bonus things that I wanted to mention and that was expect the unexpected because it's gonna happen. The doorbell's gonna ring, the, the dishwasher's gonna, you know, over flood or overflow or flood or your wash machine's gonna flood or something's gonna break or a child's gonna get hurt or something's going to happen that you didn't expect. For me, the last few days it's been, our website has been having issues and it's been taking a lot of extra time and energy. And so when you expect the unexpected, then when it happens, you don't get all flustered and frustrated because you're like, I kind of planned this margin time for that. I expected this. This was part of my plan. Instead of getting all frustrated because this is not what I had planned for. But then if the unexpected doesn't happen, you kind of get a free pass and you feel like, wow, I've got extra time today. And then bonus idea number two is to give yourself grace. I talk about this so much, but it is so important. We've got to give ourselves grace. We cannot waste energy and time beating ourselves up for what we haven't done. Let's focus on how far we have come, the little bit of progress that we are making instead of beating ourselves up over what we haven't done. And I've really been trying to do that with the Go To Bed Early Challenge this, this month because I'm, I've only hit the 10 o'clock bedtime a few times. And, but I'm looking at and saying, you know, what? But it's, I'm winding down earlier. I'm going to bed earlier. I'm getting better sleep. I'm feeling more energetic. And so I am making progress, even if I'm not where I want to be. So give yourself grace. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Um, we are not gonna be doing a Money Making Mom Scope this afternoon because I have a meeting. But if you um, have not signed up for tomorrow's webinar on how to build your email list and get your first 10,000 readers, be sure to go to moneysavingmom.com forward slash scope and sign up for that. If you can't make it live tomorrow, you will get a link to the replay if you sign up. So be sure to do that. And um, I will be hopping off and hopping back on to do my scope on our book club book for this week, which is The Life-Giving Home. So... Have a wonderful day, and I hope that you are able to just have joy and just pour into the people around you and smile and love on them, and that you end this day knowing that you focused on what was most important, and you can give yourself grace for all that didn't get done. Have a great day.